Is capacity uh, being added back? Yes, it is, but probably not as fast as uh, is, is needed to, to meet demand. How much of that is actually engineered in order to maintain their margins? I don't think a lot of it is engineered. So you mentioned uh, labor issues at the beginning, Monica, that obviously it's holding back some of this capacity. But if you look at construction pipeline, so far this year, Q1, we're at 2.7% growth compared to in 2019, we're almost at five, yeah. right? So the number of the number of hotels are, you know, that that is slowing down a lot of it driven by debt capital market issues. Uh, labor is still a little bit of a challenge around mm -hmm. the world. Mm -hmm. So, yes, capacity is remaining constrained. Airline capacity is also quite constrained, and we know how long it takes for airplanes to get back, yeah. um, back in mode. And so, yes, you know what? I think it's actually helping. You have this confluence of effects of amazing uh, trends from a travel demand perspective. Every, everybody wants to travel. The leisure segment has been very strong. But Monica, you mentioned we're not back at full force. Mm. We need business demand to recover, group demand to recover, mm. international demand to recover. So there, we have a lot of tailwinds on our back. Okay. You know, but speaking of business travel, what we're seeing is that um, business travel may not return to the levels that it was. You know, we've got certain, not only the cost constraints, but companies are trying to meet sustainability initiatives. We also have new ways of working now, right? Virtual Absolutely. meetings do work in some instances. How is the hotel industry responding to the fact that business travel may not jump back the way that we initially thought that it would? I think Tony Capuano said it best in, uh, recently following his earnings calls. We're going through a recalibration. Right, and we also have a new way of travel. So if you look at length of stay, that's actually is higher. And a lot of travelers are combining leisure with business or business with leisure. The reality is, yes, people are on the road. You all have been traveling. I've been traveling. Business class uh, cabins and airplanes are very, very tight. But you're absolutely right, Monica. And um, right now with this economic uncertainty, some companies are holding back. I would say maybe the demand mix looks a little bit different, but I don't think it's... Uh, you know, we shouldn't be concerned about business travel. It is starting to come back. Okay, and I know you are based in the United States. Are you particularly watching this softening demand for domestic travel in the U.S. as being some sort of an indicator that pricing may finally be affecting travelers to where they say, I, look, I'm just going to sit this one out. It's just too pricey to travel right now. I think that's a great question. Uh, my personal opinion is we're in a little bit of a K-shaped recovery. So those hotels that are actually offering value, um, you know, and it's you're not paying an arm, uh, arm and a leg for a very mediocre um, level of service. Those hotels are going to do very well. Those who maybe took advantage of this revenge travel are not going to be doing very well. But you're absolutely right. We are seeing rate growth start to stabilize and we're finding our new normal, which the consensus in the U.S. is probably above 2019, but maybe below 22.